my PA is on holiday this week and I've got a portfolio to run. Can I get artificial intelligence to run my portfolio for me or will the whole thing be a giant disaster? I suppose there's only one way to find out. Okay, I don't know if I trust it to jump straight in. So let's try it out on something pretty basic. Write me a business plan for investing in property in the UK. Whoa. Wow. That's pretty formal. Executive summary. Uh, we'll focus on acquiring properties in high growth areas with strong rental demand using a data-driven approach. Look, this is so much better than I thought it would be. It's citing some Tamil's research. I don't know where it's pulled it from. Talking about projections up to 2025. What else? Exit strategy. Our exit strategy will focus on long-term capital appreciation and consistent rental income. Well, yeah, that's exactly what I do. We'll also explore opportunities to sell properties that have increased significantly in value. Um, yeah, fine. Honestly, this is so much better than I thought it would be. Like, you know, if you're a portfolio landlord, mortgage lenders sometimes want you to write a business plan. Here's your business plan. Okay, I was going to get it into the more mundane stuff now, but based on that, I think we can carry on about it. I might actually learn something. So where should I invest in property in the UK with this business plan in mind? When considering ways to invest in property in the UK, it's important to focus on areas of strong rental demand and potential for long-term growth. Here are some factors to consider. Economic growth. Look for areas with a growing economy. Consider cities with a thriving job market as this will attract young professionals who are likely to be renters. Access to transport links, amenities, development potential. I mean, this is exactly what we talk about on the podcast. It's not the most advanced stuff, but it's pretty good. And actually, I wonder if it can write the podcast for us too. Oh my goodness, it's actually going to recommend areas. I didn't think it would. Okay, so where is it picked? Uh, Manchester. City has a growing economy, thriving rental market. It's even talking about redevelopment in the Northern Quarter. Birmingham. Uh, it's talking about uh, HS2. Edinburgh, Bristol, and Leeds. So of those five, three of them are pretty much the same as our hotspots. I don't think Leeds was an official hotspot this year, but it's always something we have up there. Uh, Manchester and Birmingham definitely are. So we're aligned on at least three out of the five, which is amazing. All right, let's see if ChatGPT can calculate ROI. To calculate ROI, we need to consider several factors such as the purchase price, rental income, and expenses. Here's an example calculation. So let's put in the purchase price, the brand, it's assuming expenses of 10%, which is interesting, which includes uh, management fees, maintenance, insurance, and so on. Okay, this is not so impressive because I'd expect expenses to be far higher than that. Management alone, if you're getting the property managed, would be higher than that. And it says that that's included. It also hasn't factored in using a mortgage, but I could have done better because I'm not being very precise here. So let, let's add that in and say, I'll be using a mortgage for 75% of the value. Let's see. A few moments later. Okay, this is really interesting. So it's now got gone into some more detail. It's put the mortgage amount in there. It's assumed a 25 year mortgage with a 3% interest rate. I didn't give it a rate, but that's where it's assumed. But for some reason, giving it more detail in my prompt seems to have made it give a better answer in other ways. I don't really understand why, but it's now, say, assuming a management fee of 10%, which it's put in there, and then it's also put in there an estimate of costs, whereas previously it was just, say, 10% for everything, which is more realistic. And then it's calculated the ROI correctly by dividing that by the amount that we put in. So you can tell, even though I've just been chatting to it about the UK, this is based on like American kind of data or inputs because talking about closing costs, which isn't something that we would say. And it hasn't mentioned stamp juice. Maybe it would be able to calculate it if I pushed it, but it hasn't volunteered. So this appears to have a lot of detail, but nothing close to anything you'd want to rely on. Let's see, is ChatGPT smarter than an estate agent? Well, imagine that I've bought this property and I wanted to write the rental listing for it. I haven't given it that much to work with. Let's see how it does. The stunning two-bedroom, two-bath apartment is situated in a modern block in the heart of Manchester, perfect for young couples or sharers, and looking for a contemporary and convenient living space. The apartment features a spacious open-plan living area with a fully equipped kitchen and dining area, ideal for hosting friends or enjoying a cozy night in. The bedrooms are well-proportioned with comfortable beds and ample storage space, and the two modern bathrooms offer a touch of luxury. Located just a short walk from Manchester city centre, the property is perfectly situated for those interested to draw all the city has to offer, including blah blah blah, also with an easy reach of major transport links, and then it's bulleted out some key features and ended with a call to action. I mean, that's not bad, is it? I mean, it's completely 
made it all up. I had, didn't give it much, so it's embellished all the details. But the way you've done it is, I mean, that's better than what most letting agents would do, right? And again, you probably wouldn't want to just post this as is. But isn't that such a better starting point than sitting there and going, ah, I've got to write something now. What do I say about it? I mean, that is a great starting point. And obviously that is based on not much input. Okay, let's imagine that listing has done the job and I've now got someone ready to move in. This is really pushing it now. Right, a tenancy agreement for the property. The rent is £900 per month, fixed for 12 months. What's it going to do with this? A few moments later. Okay, so let's put in the property, the term, the rent, when the rent should be paid. So it's covering off all the basics. Interestingly, it's come up with a deposit, which it's, I don't know what basis is done there, but £1,000 sounds reasonable. It's now started putting in the other type of clauses that you would get in a tenancy agreement. And that's about it. So, okay, that's not going to put any solicitors out of business just yet. It's a decent start, I suppose, but you want something a bit more robust than that. So getting a template from a landlord's association or someone like that, definitely a smarter idea than relying on chat GVD just now. Okay, bad news. My tenant's been in touch. They've reported a blocked sink. What should I do? Should I be fixing that? Should they be fixing it? And let's find out. Okay, the responsibility for a blocked sink depends on the specific terms outlined in the tenancy group, which you didn't put in there, robot. How rude! Uh, in general, landlords are responsible for ensuring the property is safe and habitable, which includes ensuring the plumbing and drainage systems are functioning properly. So if it's to do with the plumbing, the landlord's responsible. However, if it's caused by a tenant's misuse or negligence, then the tenant should be held responsible, which is correct. Right back to the tenant telling them to try unblocking the sink themselves. <laughs> oh, wow, this is amazing. It's, um... It's first, first of all, it's uh, telling them very politely to do it. And then it's actually giving them some tips for how to unblock a sink. That is incredible. Then it even goes on to say, please know that any costs incurred by the plumber may be chargeable to you if the blockage is caused by your misuse or negligence as outlined in your tenancy agreement. That's pretty spot on. I just said that as it was. And that's so much more helpful than anything I would have written on my own and much quicker as well. Okay, let's put the AI to another test. Things have taken a turn here. The rent is late. What can it do to help me? You know, hope this finds you well. Your rent is overdue. As a reminder, it's due on this date. If we don't receive your payment within a certain number of days, we may be forced to take legal action. Blah, blah, blah. We value as a tenant and would like to avoid any legal action. Not bad, but I think we're normal people to take a harder line than that. So let's try this. Make it more angry. Oh, what? <laughs> I should not hear my language model. I'm programmed to maintain a professional and respectful tone and cannot generate content that is intentionally angry or disrespectful. It's a, it's important to communicate with tenants in a clear and firm manner while also remaining professional and respectful. If you'd like assistance with crafting a more assertive message, I can certainly help you with that. Whoa, chat GPT does not like my landlord style. Okay, if it won't make it angry, let's see if it'll go the other way. Make it funnier. <laughs> Do you tend to say, it seems the red paper flood the deer must have gone missing along with your pet cat. <laughs> we understand that life can be a whirlwind, but terms of your tenancy, the rent is due. We don't want to be the fun police, so we do need to remind you the rent payment is now overdue. We promise we won't call the rent police. But if we don't receive the payment soon, we might have to break out the steery slim sword glasses. This is actually brilliant. Remember, it's not just about the money. It's also about avoiding the awkward moment where the landlord and tenant accidentally bump into each other at the grocery store. Okay, the cat bit was weird. I couldn't work out if that was a threat, saying we'd abducted it or something. But the rest of it was actually quite funny. Okay, I found a hack. He wouldn't do angry, but I found a workaround. Write it in the style of Stephen King. <laughs> Dear tenants today, we need to have a little chat about your rent. The, re the rent payment for month and year is now late, which means we have a problem. As your landlord, I've been known to be a reasonable person, but when rent is late, it's like a slithering creature in the shadows, something that lingers in the back of my mind and refuses to let go. I know you have your reasons that I can sympathise, but you must understand, as a landlord, I have my own responsibilities, and if we can't come to a solution, I fear we may have to bring in someone who won't be as kind-hearted as I am. Someone who will bring with them the dread of the unknown, the fear of the dark. That is it. I'm just cutting and pasting that into Gmail, and off we go. That is perfect. Okay, so based on this, would I put ChatGPT in charge of my portfolio? Well, no. Oops. 
deleted. But some of what it's done is pretty good. So the business plan I thought was pretty impressive. And the communications, again, wouldn't send them as they were. But how much time could that save you if you don't have to write that kind of thing from scratch? Just giving you a template where you can fill in the blanks or tweak it a bit, that could be a massive time saver. We definitely saw some of its limitations as well, which is that it wasn't so strong on some of the detail. But although it did provide caveats, I think a limitation of this technology right now is that it seems very coherent in the way it presents everything. It seems very certain. And so it's very convincing what it puts together. And if you didn't know any better, you might take his word for it. So with some of those calculations, you might go, oh, yeah, let's say that that's right. But when you know a little bit more, you know, actually, it's not right. So it's hard to tell if you're not experienced. What is it right about and what is it wrong about? Because often they look and sound exactly the same. So based on that, can you use ChatGPT to guide your research? Yes, absolutely. Can you rely on it for information? No, certainly not. It's not a replacement for your own knowledge. You've still got to know this stuff yourself, but it can give you some ideas. I think where it really shines is the property description. That was pretty good. And the, the correspondence it was doing, that's going to be a real time saver. Although maybe you do want to be careful before sending your tenants something quite that spine chilling. So with the help of AI, maybe you'll be able to do even more with your investments. And with the market being as it is now, there's lots of opportunities out there. So watch this video next, where we suggest some specific things that we're doing right now to help us get better deals.